Welcome everyone. Today is the new moon celebration. It is the very first day of the month on God's calendar. And I'm excited about that. Happy New Year, everyone. And I know this is our first time together celebrating the new year, but it's going to be a fun time. We're just going to do a couple things. And then I just have just a couple short scriptures to read just so you guys can understand the importance of the time and the meaning of it. So let me go ahead and share my screen and then we'll hit the ground running. So really quick, let me just share everyone who may be watching this video. Um, this is our website, savedbytruth.com. So if you're new to our ministry and this is your first time watching this video, you can know who we are. Uh, give me one second here. All right. So our ministry is savedbytruth.com. You can take a look at our website, savedbytruth.com, learn all about our ministry. You can click here and watch our videos. If you want to donate to our ministry, you can there. And then this is talking about what we teach, which is repent and be baptized, every one of you, um, the kingdom of heaven is near. And there's the scriptures below to understand how it works. Um, down here is the Sabbath day. This will be changing as of today because we did spot the new moon last night. And if you don't understand what that means, you'll understand here in a few minutes. So the calendar just started all over again and the new year started all over again and the count to the Sabbath. So the new moon begins three things. Just so you understand, the new moon begins the year begins the month, and begins the count to the Lord's Sabbath day. That's one thing that you want to make sure you understand and learn. Our ministry understands this, but most people around the world don't. But you got to understand, God made the sun and moon at the beginning. The sun governs the day, governs everything during the day, but the moon governs the night and governs the evening and it starts the year, the month, and the count to the Sabbath day. You can watch this video. This will teach you about who the Antichrist is who the person that we've um, seen, actually this one won't show that, this one will show actually about the great deception, what the great deception is, but we have other videos at the bottom that show who the Antichrist is. Um, this one also talks about the, the Sabbath, uh, about baptism and how it all works, and this one talks about the commandments, and then if you want more information, you can opt in and get more information about our ministry. So today what we're going to do is, I have a couple scriptures I just want to share with you, because it is today's, uh, today is the first day of the year, and the first day of the month on God's calendar. So God wanted me to show you the scriptures yesterday. I was um, just going to sleep and said, he said, this is what we're going to go over today. So that's why I sent you guys all out this message, letting you know that today we're going to have a little short convocation. And it's going to be um, pretty brief. I got a few scriptures. I'm just going to read through them so you can see it. So we're going to start with the first one. The first scripture we're going to look at is Exodus, Exodus 12. Because everything began with the Israelites back then when they were supposed to leave Egypt. I'm going to show you the very first thing God showed the Israelites. So Exodus 12, when God was talking to Moses. This is right as after he did the ten, he did the plagues. He did nine of the plagues. And he was about to do the last plague, which is killing the firstborn. So it says here, the Lord, which is Jesus. Remember, Jesus is Lord. He's the one who led Moses out of Egypt and all of that. It said, said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. So he's telling them when their year starts. Now, everybody else, they might have been on a different calendar. They might have been on a different year. They may have been on a different cycle, system, whatever. I don't know what they were on. But God's now establishing his people and establishing their month and their year. The word month in Hebrew means moon. So if you look at other translations, it'll say this moon is the, is the first for you. So it's the first moon. So the first moon and the first month and the first year starts off with the same, just like in Genesis 1. This is when time started for them, is when he explained this. And then if you look down further, I'm not going to go through it, but if you look down further, on the 14th day of the month is when the, the lamb was sacrificed and they had Passover. So 14 day after this would be Passover. So if we're going to celebrate Passover, it will be 14 days from today. Because that would be the 14th day of the month on God's calendar. The exact same day they had to put the door over the blood frame. The angel of death passed by and they killed the, and the firstborn got killed. So that was the day Jesus died on the cross. And he was buried and resurrected two days later. So I just wanted to just see that this is why we're celebrating this day. Because that's the day God established his calendar for his people. So that's the first scripture I want to show you. Let me show you the second one. The second one is in Psalms. So you can write these scriptures down and you need to know them because they will come into play in the future. And that's not how you spell Psalms. P-H-A-L, how, how do you spell it? Psalm P-S-A. 
L-M. Okay, there it is. Psalm 81. Look what it says. Psalm 81. It says, starting at verse 3. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon. And when the moon is full on, our, on the day of our festival. This is a decree for Israel, which we know, based on Galatians 3, 26-29, we are the people, the baptized disciples that keep the commandments, are Israel now. They're all grafted in, remember. An ordinance of the God of Jacob. So this is who we are, and so that's why we celebrate it. So what I'm going to do really quick, I'm going to blow the ram's horn, which I did last night at the feast, but I'm going to blow it now in front of all of us. Um, pray that I can get it right. And the reason why, another issue that happened to me years ago, um, I had Bell's palsy because I got sick. I had a root canal. It moved my whole system. My whole system. I went into the hospital. Half my face was messed up to the point where I couldn't even blow right. I couldn't speak or anything. Half my face had dropped, but I still had to work. So my face dropped and my mouth got messed up. So I have a crooked pucker. My lips don't pucker up right. So pray that it comes out good. Okay, so here we go. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> there you go. So we now officially started our new year. It says, "Blow the um, the 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 ram's horn at the new moon when the moon is and when the moon is full." Because on the Passover they blow the the, the um, feast the the new moon the blow the horn also at the festival. So this is why we're having this festival today. The reason for the horn, the reason why they blew the horn, is because they would announce to the people, they'd go to the top of the highest hill and blow the horn, and a lot of people would blow the horn so everyone could know the year started, or everyone could know the month started, or everyone could know the, the count to the Sabbath is starting, or there's a feast day, or they would get everybody together so they can go out, like on the Feast of Trumpets. They could be go out to move to the next town or wherever they were going to go. That's the reason for the horn blowing. But this horn today was to signify to let everyone know that this, the year just began. Just like in the world, what did they do? They set off firecrackers and fireworks and they, they blow a trumpet. And the, the ball drops and all the other good stuff that goes on around the world, right? Well, the same thing. What we did is we blew the trumpet and how did I do it? I got on Facebook and I posted a message and I blew the trumpet. I told everybody that today was the new moon, new year. Here's the coolest part for you guys. Here's the coolest part for everyone watching this right now. If you're celebrating the Lord's feast day today, you're celebrating the new moon celebration, do you know you're one of very few people that are doing this? One of very few. There's 8 billion people on earth right now. How many people do you think stopped their entire day to honor God's feast day today? Very few. You know why? Because many are invited, few are chosen. Very few people know about this. And even people that think they know don't know actually when it is. It's based on God's calendar, the sun, moon, and stars. And you're going to see that right now. So you guys are very chosen. Just like the Israelites, when they came out of Egypt, they were chosen by God. There was millions of people on earth, but he selected this one group of people, chose them, gave them his new calendar, and said, this is how you honor me. And then he started teaching them Passover, the unleavened bread, feast of first fruit. Then he gave them the Ten Commandments. He baptized them through the Red Sea. They went to the Red Sea on dry ground. The water flooded the earth. I flooded the people, the, 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 the Egyptians, and then they came up on dry ground. That was their baptism. They baptized all of them together. And then he taught them the Ten Commandments and was leading them to the Promised Land. That's exactly what God's been doing through me, with you, all of this time for the last 12 years in the exact same way. So this is what he taught us literally 12 years ago right here, this New Moon Festival. And I'll prove that to you by the time we're done. That's what's going to be so amazing is what God revealed to me today about this New Moon celebration, okay? So, so let's keep reading. We've got a couple more scriptures I want to read real fast for you. Write these scriptures down just so you can know them and have them. Let's go to the next one. The next one is Isaiah. Isaiah 66, because there's a deception out there. You know, Christians and people will say Colossians 2 verse 16, I think it is, or 3.16, it says, don't let anybody judge you by what you eat or drink or what you wear or by a Sabbath day, um, for that's a shadow of things to come. You're right, it is a shadow of things to come, and the its substance is Christ. The new moon celebration and all the feast days all have to do with Jesus. It's the substance of Christ. But if you think about what is a shadow, shadow is something that's behind you, 
And then when the sun comes in the other direction, what happens? It comes in front of you. So it's right. It is a shadow, but it doesn't stay behind you. It comes in front. So the feast, so the new moon celebration was behind us, and now it's coming back in front of us. And here's the proof right here. Isaiah 66. Look what it says. Isaiah 66, verse 23. Most people don't know much about Isaiah, but the book of Isaiah is one of the reasons that proved to me the Bible. The book of Isaiah was written in a very unique way. It has 66 books in it, just like the Bible has 66 books in it. But the unique thing about the book of Isaiah, it's smack dab in the middle. And that book has 66 books too. From book number 1 through 39 is actually testifying the Old Testament. It's all Old Testament stuff. As soon as it gets to um, book 40, it starts talking about a, a, a reed coming in the desert, talking about John the Baptist, and then it starts proclaiming Jesus, for talking about Jesus. So you got to understand, the book of Isaiah proves the Bible because it's smack dab in the middle. It has the exact same amount of books, and it, it's written on the same order of the Bible. Okay, so book 40, there's, there's 39 books in the Old Testament. There's 27 books in the New Testament. Same thing with the book of Isaiah. 39 books talks about the Old Testament. Starting in verse, 20, in verse 40, it talks about the New Testament. But the coolest part is book 66 is the last book talking about Revelation. So what we're about to read is, profane, is talking about what's going to happen at the end times. Here's the proof. As a new heaven and a new earth that I will make before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. Here's the question. Has God made a new heaven and a new earth yet? No. That means it's still coming. He says it's going to happen. So this is talking about end times. He says from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. So at the end times, right now, God brought his covenant back. He brought his commandments back. He brought his year back. He brought his calendar back. At the end times, before we made a new heaven and new earth, which is right now, and from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind is going to worship him. You know why? Because you've been here. We've taught this message. No one on earth has been teaching this message. Me and my wife, 12 years ago, when we learned about the new moon, we couldn't find a single person anywhere on earth teaching about the new moon celebration. But we saw it in scripture and we taught it by faith. And guess what? This message now has gone to over oh, close to 100 million people on every country on earth, on every continent, everywhere on earth. This message is gone. Now, we don't know who's honoring it, but the Bible is proven that in the last days, that message will go to all mankind and all mankind will bow down and they will honor him from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another. Because as soon as the 144,000 are gone, the angels are going to come, and guess what they're going to teach? From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another. That's exactly what's going to happen. That means from one month to month, and from one week to week. That's a biblical proof right there. So that's why we honor this day, and that's why this day is so powerful and so important that most people don't even know. But God has blessed you. God has you know, strengthened you and encouraged you that you do know this information. And he wants you to know why it's so important to him. So now we're going to read two more passages about this. Let's go read four, Psalms 4. Psalms 104, actually. Read Psalms. Psalms 104. Look what it says. Verse 19. Psalms 104, 19. It says... Uh, oh, I'm 19. I was thinking 119. Psalm 104. Look what it says. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. <laughs> so there it is. The moon marks the seasons. Now, what are seasons? Biblically speaking, seasons are what's called appointed times. Understand that. Appointed times. Today, we would say, um, uh, today in today's world, we call those um, holidays. So, you know, the Bible talks about holy days. See, Satan always tries to do what God does. So God made holiday, holy days. God made holy days. Satan made holidays. The holy days are um, the new moon celebration is a, is a season. It's actually the new moon festival. It's what we're doing today. Then the next um, new moon, the new, next one is Sabbath. The Sabbath is based on you spot the new moon and you count to seven, which is exactly what we're going to do. So today is the first day of the month. 
Tomorrow is the second day of the month. Se seven days from now, which would be next Wednesday, will be the seventh day. That's the Sabbath day. There's no Gregorian calendar. That's how it works. The moon marks the seasons. And then the next one is Passover. See, Passover began at twilight when Jesus, when the sun went down and the moon came up. Then it was a full moon. Jesus died on the 14th day of the month. It's always a full moon on the 14th day of the month. And then he was buried and resurrected the next two days on Feast of, Un Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of First Fruit. And then after that, the Feast of Weeks, Fe Feast of Pentecost, is you know based on 40 days later. You count from that day. You count the, the, um, the, the, fe the, the Sabbaths, and then you get to the, the Feast of Weeks. And then after that, the Feast of Trumpets is on the seventh day of the month. It's, sorry about that. It's on the seventh day of the month on God's calendar. I apologize. My phone started to ring there, so I got to turn my ringer off. Yes, yeah, so it's on the seventh day of the month, and that's based on the new moon again. That's how it works. It's based on the new moon. Okay? And then the uh, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, those are all based on the moon. Just like the Bible says, it says he made the moon to mark the seasons. Write down the word mark. He marked to mark the seasons. See, right now we're being marked. The people that are honoring God's Sabbath day are being marked by God. I did a whole entire lesson on this on our video, on a video about the marks of God. There's six marks of God. See, God marks his people. Just like right now, the mark of the beast is marking his people with that thing that's going inside their bloodstream and, and polluting their body. He's marking them. Well, God's marking his people too. Guess how he's marking them? By who's honoring him on his holy days. So right now, by you learning this message, he's marking you. And he's marked 144,000 people, the dead in Christ, those who are died in Christ up from Adam till now. And now he's marking those who are alive and remain, those who are honoring him. So you, by being here, you're being marked. And then there's people around the country, around the world, that other brothers in Africa and India, they're being baptized, which they're getting the Holy Spirit, and they're getting their sins forgiven, and they're being marked. So that's what's happening. God is marking us through his Whole, his new moon celebration and his, and his holy days. So let's keep going though. So that's what the moon is for. Two more scriptures and then we'll be done. Let's go to Joel. Two more passages of scripture. Joel 2. Joel 2. Let's read. Joel 2, starting in verse 1. Look what it says. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Which is exactly what I'm doing right now. So we are Zion, just so you know. If you read Revelation 14, it says the Lord is with Zion and the 144,000. So the holy hill and the people are Zion. So we are Zion and we're blowing the trumpet, sounding the alarm to let people know that we're at the end times. We're letting them people know that right now. We're, doing, we're living this out right now in, in real time. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. See, it hasn't happened yet. Just as we're saying right now, it hasn't happened yet. It is close at hand. Well, think about when this was written. This is Joel. This was written probably three to 4,000 years ago, cl close to that time period. But he's saying it's close at hand. Well, how close is it at hand right now? It's like right now. It's in the hand. It's right there. We're at the, ninth, the 11th hour and 58th minute. That's where we are. A day of darkness, a day of gloom, of clouds, and of blackness, like this dawn spreading across the mountain. A large and mighty army comes. We know what's happening around the world. Such as never was in ancient time, nor ever will be in ages to come. Just like the Bible says in Matthew, he says, never to be seen again, and nothing's ever happened like what's about to happen. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Most people don't know that Putin in Russia and China just partnered. And they just said last night, that there's going to happen something right now that's going to happen soon that's never happened in the last hundred years. They just said that last night on a video, which is exactly what this is talking about. Before them, fire devours behind the flames and blazes. Before them, the land is like the Garden of Eden. Behind them, a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. They have an appearance of horses. They gallop along like cavalry, with a noise like that of a chariot. They leap over the mountaintops, like in cracks, crackling fire consuming stubble like mighty army drawing up for battle. The sight of them, nations are in anguish. Every face is turned pale. They charge like warriors. They scale the walls of, like soldiers. They all march in line, not swerving from their course. They do not jostle each other. Each marches straight ahead. They plunge through their defenses without breaking ranks. They rush upon the city. They run along the walls. 
They climb in the houses like thieves. They enter through windows. In other words, they're trying to escape this army that's coming. But you got to remember, this was talked about years ago. This is a prophecy about the end times of what's going to happen, what's happening now. So they're just kind of describing what, what it looked like from their perspective. It's going to look different from our perspective. Before them, the earth shakes. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon are darkened. The stars no longer uh, light shine. The Lord's thunder and the heads of his army and forces are beyond number. And mighty an army that obeys his commandments. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? You do not want to be here during the day of the Lord. And we won't be. And you're going to see that right now. It's so exciting. The day of the Lord is coming. It's not here yet. But this is what it's talking about. This is the prophecy in Joel that Joel is prophesying about our times right now. So let's read what it says to do. Rend your heart. Rend your heart means purify your heart. Make sure your heart is ready and purified. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. In other words, clean your heart, purify your heart. If you've got any sinful nature going on in your heart, purify it now. Don't worry about washing your clothes. Purify your heart. God judges the heart. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. He relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing. Offering grain and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Look what it says. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the cha bride chamber. Let the priest who minister before them weep because the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do you see what that's saying? Let the bridegroom leave his room? Do you know what that's talking about? The five wise virgins, which we just went over yesterday. Five are wise, five are unwise. The five that were wise went in with the Lord to the bride, to the wedding party. That's called the first fruit. These are the 144,000. That's exactly who this is talking to. Those are the first people. That's Revelation 14, the first people that go into the kingdom of God. This is prophesying about you, church, church of Philadelphia. This is talking specifically about you. That's why he's telling us to blow the trumpet. That's why he called this meeting right now to blow the trumpet in Zion. And if you read Revelation 14, it's talking specifically about that particular point. So this is why this is such an encouraging meeting. God wanted us to see this. Let's look at the last scripture on this. The last scripture. Look what it says. Look what it says. I apologize. Then the Lord will be jealous for the land. He and took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you grain and new wine and new olive oil, enough to satisfy you for. In other words, new teaching. He's going to teach you the new teaching, which he's been doing. We are the new grain. We are the first fruit. It says enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. Remember he said, he's going to make them bow down to our feet and acknowledge that he loved us. That's the church of Philadelphia. I will drive the nor northern hordes far from you, pushing it into a parched and barren land. Its eastern rank will drown in the Dead Sea. And its western ranks will in the Mediterranean Sea. And its stench will go up. Its smell will rise. Surely he has done great things. Do not be afraid of the land of Judah. Be uh, glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid of the wild, you, you wild animals. For the pastures in his wilderness have become green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig and its yield and, and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. Guess when that time frame is? Right now. This is the autumn rains and the spring rains is right now. Because in our area of the world, it's the autumn, it's the, it's the spring rains. In the other half of the world, the other hemisphere, it's the autumn rains. It's right now. It's talking about the feast of trumpet, feast of uh, the, the new moon celebration. Because he is faithful. That's why we shall be rejoicing right now. 
He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. When did he lead the, the Israelites out of Egypt? After he taught them the new moon celebration and then he got, led them out of Egypt. That's exactly what he says he's going to do just as he did before. Now, I don't know the day. I don't know the hour. I can't say it's happening today. Don't know that. I can't say it's happening any day now. But I can't say this is the time period he's talking about. The threshing floor will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and new oil. Remember in Revelation, he says, don't touch the oil or the wine until the 144,000 are sealed. See, he's going to give us new oil and new wine. I will repay you for the years the locusts were eaten, and the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I send among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. You will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel. Guess what? The Lord Jesus is in Israel. He is in us. In the people. How does he get in us? Through baptism, in water, for the forgiveness of our sin. That's how we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is inside of us right now. We have the same power in us that's in the Lord. That I am the Lord your God. And there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. And that's you, brothers and sisters. That's what the Lord wanted you to know today. That that's going to happen. Look what it says. Now comes the day of the Lord. And afterward... I will pour out my people and all people. Your son will, and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and show wonders in the heavens and on the earth. Blood and fire and billow of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion... And in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord said, even among the survivors, survivors who the Lord will call. So you got to understand, the 144,000 will be gone, but he's got to do this again. He's going to pour out his spirit on all people. The Holy Spirit's going to come down, and the angels are going to come down, and he's going to be talking to people, all people, all nations. And he's going to give the, the people the opportunity to be, first fruit, uh, to be the, the great harvest for the next seven years, a period of time. That's what this is talking about. But you, Church of Philadelphia, that's not you. You are the first fruit. You go first. That's why he's telling you this information now. Let's look at the last scripture, and then we'll be done. The last scripture is Hosea. Hosea 6. You got to understand, I love how God puts these messages together. Last night, I was about to go to sleep. In five minutes, God said, these are the scriptures I want you to look at and I want you to teach tomorrow. God is talking directly to you. He wants you to know this information. He wants you to understand who you are and whose you are so you can be excited and rejoice during this time. Hosea 6, starting in verse 1. It says, unrepentant, Israel unrepentant. It says, come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Well, where does the Lord live? In the kingdom of heaven. See, on the third day, he will revive us. Now, what does that mean, the third day? Well, I'm going to show you what that means in the third day. It says, let us acknowledge the Lord... Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. That is only one time of the entire year where there's spring rains and there's water rains. That's at the new moon celebration at the beginning of God's year. There's only one time. And that time is right this very minute. So I'm not saying he's coming today. I can't say that. But what I can say is the Bible says, as surely as the sun rises, he will appear. So I can tell you right now, he's coming soon. So what does it mean? Two days and three days. Let me show you. God showed this to me years ago. God showed this to me years ago, and I did this, and I wrote this out. Check it out. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Let me make this a little bigger. So he died on the cross 2,000 years ago. 
So from Jesus' birth to 2,000 years, look what it says. From Jesus' birth to 999 years was the first day. From 1,000 years to 1,099, 1999, which was the year I was baptized, it was the second day. He said he's going to come to us on the third day from the year 2000 to 3000 was the third day. So right now, we're 22 years, 23 years into the third day. Kind of. I'm not going to go into details about that. That's a whole other revelation God showed me. But check this out. From Adam to Noah is the first day. From Noah to Abraham was the second day. To Abraham the third is the third day. That's 3,000 years. From David to Jesus was the fourth day. From Jesus to 99 was the fifth day. To 1099 was the sixth day. And we reign for a thousand years on the seventh day. Just like the Bible says, he's going to return to us on the third day and restore us. And it says he will appear. That's the time frame we're in right now, you guys. God revealed that to me. But let me show you the other thing that he revealed. Uh, wow, this is something that just literally happened last night. Remember I said every year what he would do, he would show me some things and, and I would either be right or wrong or, or he would show me at the end of every Sabbath service, at the end of every feast, I would be off by something. So let me show you this year what I was off on. I created this in 2017 after I got out of the hospital. God said, here's, the, here's how it works. And everything began at Obama. This is what I thought. Now, Obama was a big part of it. He was the one who talked about the man of sin and everything. But let me show you what God showed me here. So here's where the 2000 began, the third day. The year 2000 was Passover 1. Okay. Every year on Passover, it started. 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? 8, right? But let me show you. I thought everything started at Obama, which would make the year 2022 Passover 14. That's what I thought. And yesterday just ended that time period. So guess what? From God's perspective, I was off. But I said, God, what did I miss? He goes, Stephen, you didn't miss anything. Let me just show you something. And he wanted me to share this with you. He said, Stephen, everything didn't begin with Obama. Obama's part of this, the beast system. He said, Stephen, everything began with you. Everything began with you and your wife. Because in 2009 is when I revealed the Sabbath to you. I revealed it to you this year. That's when you went with your wife to the business meeting at the end of that year. That's when you gave over your business, your real estate business. That was when you sat down at the Starbucks on 2009 in December and said, well, and you quit Nouveau Riche and you said, I'm giving everything up for you, God. And you started under this understanding of the Sabbath. He said, what ended up happening is the next year, that's when 2010 came. And right at the beginning of that year, at the beginning of 2009, from my perspective, is when you actually learned this information. And that very first year is when you left the church. You said, I'm done. I'm taking my family. I'm going to go obey you. That's what you said, Stephen. That's what God told me. He said, Stephen, that's what you did. And that was at the beginning of the year. That was when it started, which was 2009, not 2008. It had nothing to do with Obama. It had to do with you. He said, when you and your wife left that church is when revelation started. So I said, okay. He said, the next year is when you learned about the Sabbath day and you started honoring it. Okay. The next year after that is when you, start, you started going to the Sabbath day, started honoring the services and all that stuff. The next year on two, in Revelation 3 is when I established the Church of Philadelphia because this was the year. Revelation 3 in 2011 is the year you guys left that church in Temecula and you brought your family in the house and you started teaching the message, Stephen. And you started teaching about your building an ark and you did a four-hour message. And you established the Church of Philadelphia in, 2000, in 2011, Stephen. That's what happened. And that's when the Church of Philadelphia began. So if you start to count from here, 2012 is Revelation 4, 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What happened is right here is when it actually began. you got to add one more year. So it didn't start here. It started here. So this would be year one. Two, three, four, five. So Revelation 14 is actually 2023, which began today. Now we're in Revelation 14. So really, Revelation 14 wasn't last year. Revelation 13 was last year. That ended yesterday. Today began Revelation 14, which means the 144,000 now have the ability to go. 
God revealed that to me last night. And he wanted me to reveal it to you. So that's exactly what happened. And that's where I, it was so awesome. Because every single year, what God would do for me is at the end of every year, I'd be discouraged. I'd be down like, we didn't go to the kingdom of God. Why not? And he would say, well, the man of sin hasn't been shown or something hasn't been shown. But this year, he didn't show me anything that was wrong. All he showed me was that I started at the wrong person. I'm not going to start with the man of a, a, a part of the B system. Stephen, it's going to start with my people. Just like with Moses. Everything began with Moses. The Lord came to Moses and said, this is the beginning of your year. Well, guess what? God came to me and said, this is the beginning of your year when he taught us the new moon celebration. Which was exactly at this time when he established the Church of Philadelphia. So God wanted me to share that with you. And then this is the last scripture so you can know this is what happens next. Revelation 14. I'm just going to read it just because you guys should all know it by now. But I'm going to read it anyway. And then we'll end it off in prayer. Look what it says. Revelation 14. The Lamb and the 144,000. It says, Then I looked, and there before me was a Lamb, Jesus, standing on Mount Zion, us, and with him 144,000 who had his name and their father's name written on their forehead, the Church of Philadelphia. And I sound I heard of, sound, the sound I heard was like that of rushing waters and loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was that of a harpist playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could live in the song except the 144,000 that had been redeemed from the earth. That means raptured, taken, gathered from the earth, protected, just like the Lord said. It said these, I apologize. It said these are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remain virgin. These are the five wise virgins. They follow Jesus, the Lamb, wherever he goes. If the Sabbath is on a Saturday, if the Sabbath is on a Tuesday, it doesn't make a difference. They follow Jesus wherever he goes. They were purchased from man among mankind with the blood of Jesus, from his death, burial, and resurrected, and offered as first fruit to God of the Lamb, the first fruit that are gathered at the feast of the feast, the first day of the year, when the new grain is, is ripe, the, when the barley is harvested, the first fruit of the crops is called the harvest, the barley harvest. And that's why brothers and sisters all around the world are right now baptizing people. I just saw another few hundred people get baptized last night because God is calling his sheep to be taken to the kingdom of God sometime soon. It says no lie was found in their mouth. They are blameless. And that's you, Church of Philadelphia. That's you, brothers and sisters, that are honoring God on his holy day. So he wants you to know that he's coming. He's coming to get you. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. I pray it's today. I don't know. But I do know this. His word never goes void. He doesn't lie. And everything that I've shown you, that he's shown through me, is going to happen. And it's going to happen soon. Because you are the first fruit of God. So I just want to say to you guys, Happy New Year. I love you, and let's end this off in prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you so much for this day. Wow, this message is so powerful. Father, I didn't know that we even needed to do a service today. We haven't done a new moon celebration in so long. But this new moon celebration was special. It was 100% created by you um, and orchestrated by you, Father, so that your first fruit can know that you're coming for them. And so I want to thank you so much for this journey, God, for all the things you've done for us for these years. Father, thank you so much for protecting your people the way you have and giving all of us the desires of our heart in different ways. But Father, I just want to um, send out a prayer, and I hope all of us are praying in unison that you're on your way, that your city is sundown, either at twilight, at midnight, at when the rooster crows, or at dawn. And I pray as today. I pray as, as soon as possible, Father, so that we can go and be with you and we can um, go sing that song that no one else can learn. We love you. We thank you so much. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.